Previously, we set up our logger for the database class. Now we will add our logging statements and try it out. We put all of our logging settings here in this new method called setLogging. In order for them to take effect, we'll need to make a call to this method, and we'll do that in our console class. So right here where we initialize our database, right after we bootstrap it, why don't we call our setLogging method? So now our logging will be set up for our database right after we create and bootstrap it. With those settings, we can now send logging messages from our class. So let's say we are having trouble with generating our ticket, and we want to set up logging to see why. Here's where we start to create our ticket. So I'll send a very basic message right at the bottom, just before I return back to the console. I send a message by first referring to the logger which is called database log. Then I specify the severity of the message, which I'll use as info for this example, and then the string that I want to send. So I'll just say ticket created. Okay, let's try this out. I'll run our console class and maximize it. So I'll create a passenger called Mike, book flight 1000, and seat one. And here's the message that we get. It's of the severity info, and the message is ticket created. Notice, however, that we received a duplicate message. And the reason is that the global logger also received this message and printed it out. Remember, the global logger will send any messages of info or higher. So once you set up logging for your class, you may want to turn off logging that's performed by the global logger. We can do that with a simple command and I'll paste in that command right here in our setup. The command is just database log, which is our logger, and then we set use parent handlers to false. That simply means don't send any messages to any loggers above this class. So now we'll only get one message when it's an info or higher. Let me set up some logging messages for each of these sections. I'll paste one in here right at the top, that says beginning ticket creation. It'll be of the severity fine, because we're dealing with debugging level messages. Then let me put another one right here, and this one will say finding passenger, and I'll put a couple on all of these other sections as well. So now I have logging messages for finding the passenger, finding the flight, finding the seat, and then right before we start to create the ticket. That should tell me how well the method is working and just give me logging for the basic flow. Now, if I still can't figure out what's going on, maybe I want to look at more detail into what's happening here as I look up the flight. So as I loop through every flight, why don't I send some logging to say what it's looking for and what it's comparing it to? I'll just paste it in here. And notice I'm setting it to the severity of finer. So I can turn this on if I want even more detailed logging. And it will just say I'm comparing the current flight number to the flight that's inside of my loop. So now let's go up. We've got both of our logging levels set to fine, so we'll get all of the logging except for this line here, which will need to have the severity set for finer. Let's try it out. So we'll enter our passenger, our flight, and our seat, and now we should get all the logging. I mentioned it's a little unpredictable because we're sharing our console, but here's where it started to create the ticket, and then here are all the different parts of the method it went through. So it went to find the passenger, find the flight, find the seat, create the ticket, and then finally it successfully created the ticket. So there is fine level logging, but let's say we still haven't found our problem. So now we can turn on the finer level logging. And so let's just go up here and set everything to finer. And we'll rerun our console again. We'll go through the same actions. And now we've got all of the finer logging as well as the fine logging. 
So it's going through our loop here. Looks like I could have added another space, but it's comparing flight number 1000 to flight 1000. Didn't find a match. So then it compared it to flight 1010, flight 2000, and flight 2010. So you can add additional detail as you need to know more information about what your application is doing. Now, once you're done debugging, you can just turn everything off by just setting your levels to off. Now you won't get any of that logging at all. So we've been sending all of our logging to the console. It's very straightforward to send this to a file as well, and there's many examples on the web if you want to research how to do that. Logging is an expected feature of all Java applications. So as a developer, it's your responsibility to provide good logging with everything that you write.